Well, here we are, guys. Great to be on the golf course, as uh, apparently this is what men do. I like going to the racetrack. I love the momentum of a motor car. But it's amazing, and you think of a golf course and a golf ball, the momentum a golf ball needs in order to reach the whole way down there is actually the follow through. Yeah, and just right. been watching Chris, uh, you've got to follow through if you want to get the ball to really go far. And it's yeah. a bit like a Christian life. You need momentum and follow through if you're going to get to where you need to get, the goals you need to get to. And also, this is what struck me, the more you play, the better you get. That's Sustain right. the game That's as right. a believer. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about, um, on the course, because I think men don't really get together and talk much, but we're going to talk about gender-based violence, as it's a real issue in our country. So many speeches are made, and I, I think the political speeches are a lot like carbon tax. They, they, they're there, they do something, but they do nothing. And really the church needs to speak up, and we need to help our men succeed, because we just talk and talk and have days of activism, but we don't get to the root of the problem. Now, the stats concerning this are quite frightening. Well, here we are after the rain killed our momentum. Fancy trying to build momentum, come out to the golf course to chat, hang out with the team, and our momentum's killed, but we're back. You see, you mustn't let anything kill your momentum. Even rain, negativity, obstacles, you just keep going, you just come back again, and you have another go. Now, we want to talk today about the whole issue of gender-based violence, and we want to discuss why it is that men resort to beating their girlfriends, beating their wives, even murdering them. And the first thing I can think of, and I want to talk to the guys about this as we go along, is that men often can't communicate and they find themselves frustrated when a woman argues with them. They feel battered up against the wall. They feel they can't answer. They're not good in coming back. So there's a frustration and an inability to communicate. And so men, you've got to learn to sit down and talk, learn how not to resort to violence. Violence never solves anything. Violence is demonic. You've got to respond by sitting down and talking things through. Maybe later, if there's tension in the house, make sure it's later. You're the leader. You need to discuss things through and you need to find a way to win with your girlfriend or with your wife because violence is never the answer. I'm going to chat to the guys as we walk along this golf course and just enjoy the outing and play a few shots about gender violence. So we're talking about this whole thing of gender violence. Um, the second thing that we were chatting about was that, that can you remember men or uh, they don't want to be accountable. Yeah. And uh, and and they want to they want to be unfaithful, but they don't, don't want their wives to check up on them. And then when they do, they get all freaked out and they get angry and they get violent. What do you think's the answer there? Yeah, I think like if we can go back to the first time, Pastor Andrew, with communication, like especially in the black subculture, you find that men uh, try to chat up a woman, and when you know the woman isn't interested. He starts calling her names and, you know, so that's because he doesn't know how to approach, how to communicate. How to even win her. He doesn't even know how to win her. Exactly. He doesn't know how to win her. And even on the other side of that as well, you have another one who thinks, okay, I can shut up this girl. I can shut up that one. You know, multiple, you know, women in his life, you know, it's also, a, you know, something else that um, men, because he's, he's not accountable. That, that goes to the second point. He's not accountable yeah. to anyone. He thinks that he can just, you know, shut up you know, different women at, at the same time. Yeah, you know, I can yeah. mess around and not be held accountable. Yeah. 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 It's an interesting verse, is it in, um, it's in Malachi. Malachi, Malachi 2. Malachi 2, yeah. yeah. So it says if he does violence, uh, sorry, if he's unfaithful, he's actually doing violence. That's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. So imagine when a man does do violence to his wife. Yeah. Gosh, how hectic is that? Yeah. Also, no, I think when you touching on point two about accountability, I think, uh, you know, it's a good point where us guys, we need to grow up. I think we still want to play childish games yes. you know if you think of a child they try to get away with things that dad and mom don't know about and paul says when i was a child thought like a child you know i i, I had childish ways but when i grew up mm. i put yeah. those things aside oh. yeah. and essentially i think what he's saying is that i have become accountable first to god then to people mm. and i think we need to be accountable as guys we need to grow up and you know i just look at the guys around us here you know we need to have good guys around us yeah. that yeah. we can be accountable yeah. to and then go back to your first point who we can communicate to. Yes, yeah. very good. I, I kind of think that accountability and communication, they go hand in hand. 
they do. Because guys have a reputation for not wanting to talk about stuff. Um, like you saw these funny memes like, hey, uh, is everything okay? And it's like, no, nah, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I don't want to hear it because that's not what guys do. And it's, mm. it kind of perpetuates. And I think it goes from when you're younger to when you're older that you don't communicate with guys. So you can't communicate yeah. with guy friends. You can't communicate with um, your wife or your girlfriend. And because you can't communicate, it spirals. And then when you can't communicate and, you're not, and now you have to be accountable and in order to be accountable, you have to communicate. It becomes worse and worse and there's more frustration. That's right. And we don't know how to manage or self-discipline ourselves because we lack the maturity to, to beat our bodies into submission, the Bible says. And I think we also need to beat our, our anger, our temperaments and our frustrations into submission and take control of our body yes. and ultimately take control of our lives. Absolutely. In fact, the sign of an adult is self-control. Yeah. Right. Kids can't control their emotions, <laughs> nor yep. their habits, nor their attitudes. And uh, men are meant to be mature leaders in control of themselves, and especially in control of their tempers. But it seems another reason why men beat their girlfriends or their wives and even end up in murder is, is anger issues. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it comes from rejection, yeah. it comes from frustration, yeah. inability to communicate, get your point across. Um, how, how, how would you think that this is playing out in South Africa? I mean. It seems to be we're an angry society. Yeah. Well, I think that it's a, um, it's a self-perpetuating issue because I think that the way that people are growing up, they're growing up without fathers in their homes. They're growing up watching their fathers treat their wives, their girlfriends, women in their world this way. And to touch on those first two points, because nobody's talking about it, there's no communication around this, because there's no accountability that's calling men to a higher level. And because women are becoming stronger and men feel rejected by women who are True. stronger, yeah. I think that sense of manliness and that, that manliness that God has designed a man to be like is just diminishing and diminishing. Mm. And so man steps out into the world and they're already on the back foot. True. Um, and you know, Chris mentioned the verse earlier that talks about beating your own body into submission. Well, now what's happening is men are beating a woman's body into submission because wow. it's the only way of gaining a sense of power, a sense of affirmation, a sense of strength, a sense of, um, of just having power in this world because they feel like it's been taken away from them so violently before. You know, I was, I was thinking about the whole thing of um, anger issues and rejection. And if you think about it, we talk about gender violence as like it's a new thing. But violence has been in, in, in our world since Cain and Abel. Mm. And if you think that God rejected Cain, first resort was... You didn't go and discuss it with, with Abel and say, let's have a chat and, yeah. you know, yeah. why is it that I'm, I'm yeah. getting rejected and you're not? He, he kills him. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we deal with it today as like this is brand new problem that we need, you know, political activism. No, it's in the human heart. Yeah. And I think when you get rejected, it's really difficult. So a man's going to have a good self-image. Ultimately, what a woman needs is to be loved mm. and to feel that. But a man is different. A man wants to feel respected. True. But to go to the extreme, they see rejection as not being re respected. And so I think sometimes we, we take every little rejection and we think, they don't respect me, they don't respect me, that person doesn't respect me. And because, let's go back again to the first two points in number one, communicate, yeah. we, we keep that inside, yeah. we bottle it all up, we then have a whole inflated sense of ego where I'm not respected and the closest person to us, girlfriend or wife, yeah. The lady in our life, we yeah. take it out on them because yeah. yeah. I'm not respected True. and that's what we end up doing yeah. True. and that's sad. You know, the church has been blamed for gender violence because of the whole thing of, you know, suppressing women. But I think what you're saying there is so important because a man feels rejected, then he, then he goes to scripture. You're mm. supposed to submit to me. Yeah. Mm. And then she doesn't listen, then he wants to make her submit. Mm. So yeah. we've got some complex issues here, but ultimately as believers and as men, we should not be falling Absolutely. into this category. Um, Kaizen, the whole thing of culture comes into it, you know, certain cultures, especially African culture, I know mm -hmm. that women aren't respected. I was watching a documentary the other day and the woman said, we're just, we just not respected. It was in Lesotho. Mm -hmm. She says, we're just not respected. Men don't view us equally to, uh, as equals. Yeah. And, um, and so that's like a, in, endemic. And, and apparently in Lesotho, one in every two men is a sexual offender. Yeah. Wow. They put you in, in prison for 10 years for rape. So it's massive in Lesotho, but even in South Africa, in our cultures, if you don't respect a woman, I mean, if you think of, if you think of a Middle Eastern culture, a woman doesn't even have a driver's license. Yeah. Mm. You, know, yeah. you can't drive. Yeah. Who are you? What do you think? Yeah. You want to be independent. Yeah. And so I, I struggle with that because I, I didn't grow up with that. What, what do you think of that in terms of culture, like in the Bible, you know? So it's, it's, it's very difficult for especially African men to try and find the right balance for, for most of them. Because I think some teachings, traditional teachings, have literally taken them on the very extreme side of, mm. you know, what being a man is. You know, I, I think, firstly, the man should be someone who knows how to communicate 
the heart of God to the woman. Yeah, not, very good. Not, not, be, very good. not uh, try to, right. you know, force yourself on her or anything yeah. like that. So in, in African culture, as, as prevalent as it is, I, I know like in South Africa, we have um, in 2019, 2020, the stats say that every three hours, a woman was, was killed, yeah. you know, which is really shocking. And I mean, we had, we had men's conference. It's just to put it in perspective, I think it's three days. So that means at the end of wow. men's conference, wow. 24 shocking. women would have been killed, wow. you know, and, and it's because I think men haven't been taught mm. properly. Yeah. So we need to reteach people, re teach them about heaven's culture, not just, mm. you know, yes. what they learn tra traditionally. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And especially in the home, mm. yeah, men need to shape shape that and and uh, model that for their for their kids. Mm. I was thinking of uh, Exodus. You know, Moses uh, grew up in a patriarchal society, but yeah. he treated women with respect. And mm. um, when he got to those uh, shepherd women that were at the well, remember yeah. Jethro's daughters were at the well, and it says the shepherds chased them away, and Moses came to their rescue. Mm. He yeah. defended them, and apparently they were Cushite women because he married one of them. Yeah. They were black women. He defended women and. There was no issue with race and with gender. Such a great example. Yeah, because he'd grown up with women. You know, his mother looked after him, saw that he was a special child, had her eye on him, and he picked that up. And then his sister put him in the bulrushes, and then Pharaoh's daughter looked after him. So his life had been shaped by his concept of what a woman was like, which carried into his adult life. And that's what we really, really need in our homes. So we need that kind of modeling in terms of... He had a healthy perspective of who women were yes and as much as he understood that he was that women are the weaker vessel he never used it as license to assert himself to 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 display his frustration you know you mentioned statistics i think uh, many people will watch this and think oh it's for somebody else but if you look at the statistics in our country it's shocking yeah, it's, huge, it's yeah. i think it's i think it's um i think it's over 50 percent of women say they've been a, a victim of it, and um, and I think that's scary. That's yeah, seventy three percent of men, men said that they had one time thought they had done they, it. They had done it, yeah. which means that it's not the minority; yeah. it's a majority problem. Yes. Yes. And we yes. all have our part to play, and we need mm. to do something about it. And I think when you actually look at the stats, it's quite alarming that this is the the predicament that we find ourselves yeah. in. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say something? On what you said, you said a healthy perception of women. Yeah. You know, I think that's so good because in our in, in society today, you you switch on, so you have social media. You look at music videos and the way men are portraying a woman as she's just she's a side chick she's a woman that i get and all that and so young men grow up with the perception that that's all a woman is yeah a sex object exactly yeah. they're just an object they're an yeah. accessory and it's up to us as men yeah. to go hang on that is not what a woman is yeah. a woman is a uh, a valuable creation of yeah. god who is meant to be a partner yeah. with us yeah. Yeah. in this partner. purpose of life that's yeah right. very good very good. Sorry, and just on that, I think the flip side is when you switch the TV and you've got that perception, and then you've got the other, which is when you've got the feminism movement yeah. where it makes men feel less than, and you have to dial down your masculinity because it's toxic. I think you, you live in this conundrum of, okay, so what is actually, wh wh what should what I be doing? What are we supposed doing? to do? Yeah, yeah. You, you Who are we supposed to be? Exactly. exactly. That's why the church has to speak up, yeah, and the church has to take a stand and say, hey, thank you for your political activism. We know you're trying to do something, yeah. but yeah. actually we in Christ... Amen. understand how God created man and woman and we know our roles and we need to keep focusing on that. So another issue it seems is the issue of power and if a man can't win by, by discussion or by verbal verbal um, communication then he resorts to, to using his force, his upper body as, as we know, his upper body is stronger than that of a woman. They say today men and women are equal, We're equal in rights, yes, but not in abilities and design. Men still can't have babies. No matter what you do, you can dress up like a woman, but you can't have a baby. And even on the golf course, apparently, yeah, there are different tee off places because of the strength of a woman. And they say that rape is a power issue more than a sexual issue, from what I understand. And so if a man can't lead phys um, with, with wisdom and with his com communication ability and with influence, then he resorts to power and domination. Yeah. Uh, even when it comes to the whole role of sex, you know, she gave signals and, and women mustn't do that. And any little, you know, woman dresses attractively, then, then it's a signal for me to have sex with her. We've got the whole thing the wrong way around. You're, you all remember Genesis 34, yeah. Hamor, the son of uh, Shechem, yeah. who took Dina and raped her. And then afterwards went to her family and it says he loved her and then he wanted to marry her. That's like a complete opposite. Heathen nations do that. They get the physical right and then they try and get the other thing right. Uh, or they do the physical and then try and get that right. So what do you guys think in terms of the power issue, you know, domination, using physical body to dominate a woman? Um, that, that is why men 
end up doing what they're doing as a pattern. Yeah, it's true. I think uh, you hit the nail on the head when you said it's it's women are the weaker vessel and men are stronger. And that's something God's given us as a gift to maintain this relationship with our wives, uh, with our spouses. But what we end up doing is instead of taking what God's given us, is we, we pervert it and we yeah. use the strength that's given to us by God to gain control because we, we can't self-control ourselves. We can't uh, do all those things that we, we had spoken about earlier. And, um, and I think it's, it's, it's such a tragedy um, for us that we've taken what God's given us, something that's good. And you, and you hit on it like heathen nations do that. When, when it looked at, at, yeah. at, um, at first having sex, and raping her and then falling in love. But if you look at society today, maybe society is heathen and we actually need to be different and go according to God and his word because God's word says you first fall in love, you first get married and then you do and then you get to have sex within the confines of marriage and you respect it and not the other way around. I think we look at uh, TV, Instagram and everything we watch. It's a heathen nation that we follow and you're becoming more heathen than we realize, I think, in society. Digital Babylon. Digital Babylon. Yeah. Um, so, Chris, you know, you mentioned that verse in the Bible that acknowledges that women are the weaker vessel. It's not saying that they're weaker in character or weaker in virtue, but weaker physically. Um, but attached to that is a very clear instruction that husbands should live with their wives in an understanding way and honor the woman. Um, and so it's very clear that we are as not the weaker we honor them as the weaker yeah. vessels. So we're not supposed to use our strength and our power to overwhelm them, mm. but we actually have such a strong responsibility yeah. to use our strength and our abilities and the gifts that God has given us as men to help our wives, to understand them sure. and to, right. to, to honor them, yeah. not to disregard them, not to put them on the side, not to just idolize them or objectify them, but to, to honor them. Yeah. If you're unable to honor a woman, that's a hard condition that you need to address. Yeah, like Paul says that we need to honor our wives in the same way that Christ lays his life down that's for the yes. church. Yeah. Yes. And we have to ask ourselves as husbands and as men, are we laying our lives down? Very good. In the same way Christ did for the church, yeah. his bride. The, the right use of power. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It. Mm. And also men say, but it's got to be 50-50. No, it's 100 from you. Yeah. And then leave her 100 up to God. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very good. But you yeah, do your 100. True. Very good. Because it's also, good. if she did, then I wouldn't. No, yeah. no, yeah. you just do what Christ did. Yeah. 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 Christ good. had no one supporting him, yeah. cheering him on, and everyone against him. And he still did it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it's good for us to learn that, eh? And, and I want to reiterate this because we talked about it earlier, but the whole thing of, you know, violence is demonic. Mm. And there's no justification for violence. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Never. You can never say, oh, but, you know, she was asking for it or I had to put her in a place, you know. Yeah. You know, Pastor Andre, it goes together with having a corrupt heart. You know, the Bible uh, shows us with, with Noah, the days of Noah, the Bible says that, you know, violence and, and corruption were mm. at their highest point. Yes. And that's, that's when, you know, destruction came, judgment came. You know, so we, we have to understand if, if, if the heart is not right, there's no way that a man will understand how to use the power that he has correctly and properly. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. God's got awesome power, but he doesn't use it exactly. incorrectly. Exactly. He doesn't dominate, and he's our role model there. Well, another one, and I mean, there's so many issues, you know, that cause men, but the, the one I think that is probably one of the most important is men who start abusing alcohol or drugs. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, it's a Christian conference, you know, who are you talking to? Well, we've been in lockdown, and I know that Christian men are not, are not uh, exercising the self-control they should. Christian men are also guilty of beating their wives. And when you're not coping with life in general, finances in general, mm. self-esteem in general, there's rejection, you're in, unable to communicate, you can hide yourself away. You know, just it's not brandy at night, maybe just one glass of wine, another glass of wine, another glass of wine, and then you find your temper's on the ragged edge, mm. and then it sparks off, you know. Well, Kaizen, uh, Proverbs talks about that, doesn't it? It says in Proverbs 20 verse 1 that wine produces markers, and there's an interesting word in the second part, it says alcohol leads to having brawls wow and that's that's an interesting because i think when you the violence has its roots in alcohol yeah when you try and numb yourself or numb your emotions instead of dealing with them with alcohol mm. you know you end up you know being violent and worse off than before exactly. ephesians 4 says that we should uh, put aside brawling yeah uh, violence and so amongst men there should be none of that yeah standing in bars or beating each other up or grabbing hold of each other yeah. let alone with our with our wives yeah. and i think that you can get into a trap you can get into a hole yeah. it's like on a golf course you know you hit yeah. a ball and you end up in a in a sand trap yeah. it looks easy to get out of but if you're in a drug issue drug or alcohol you know dependency um what would you offer to men as advice if they find themselves in a hole of uh, they're drinking too much now they're in the habit of doing it and they find they get quite explosive and so they go in the garage or they go for a walk to get away from the family the very thing that they're responsible for um we need to help men in that regard and yeah, talk yeah, about that yeah, yeah. well i think that um 
so many guys are stuck in this, but they, they are unwilling to acknowledge that this is actually an issue. Mm. Like, no, I, I have a, like a glass of wine every night. It's not a big thing. Mm. Um, where deep down, it's actually, it's a, it's a major thing. Um, so I think firstly being able to acknowledge it and say, look, I, I think I actually do have a problem over here. Uh, but it seems like we're always going back to those first two points that you made, Pastor Andre, where there's accountability and communication. Yeah. Because there is so much of that power that addiction has over you that's removed when you start talking about it to the right people and you remain accountable yes. to that. Mm. Because it means that you suddenly, um, you've, you've disclosed it. So it's not a deep, dark secret anymore. It's not something that you're hiding away. And God can't ever work with something that we keep in darkness. Yes. Um, but when we bring it to the light, He's able to start working with it. And when we have sound godly counsel through the right relationships, um, and I think, I think guys would realize that the ability to have a good, solid, godly male friendship is so much more possible than we actually realize. Mm. But we don't realize because we're not wanting to put ourselves out there. Um, but I think just doing those two things, just having, having accountability and, and actually communicating about the issues that are actually issues for ourselves, it goes such a long way into yeah. breaking the power that addiction has over our lives. You've got to share it with someone, eh? Yeah. Got to talk about it. You can't always see yourself as you really are sometimes because yeah. you get into a pattern. I was thinking of the, you know, the famous story of Nabal. And the Bible says he was in high spirits mm. and feasting like a king, yeah. but he treated his wife like dirt, you know, yeah. treated her like uh, she was just a servant. But David saw in, in, in his actual wife, a Abigail, mm. he saw her as a queen, you know, yeah. and it just shows you, you, you lose your perspective when you, when you end up drinking and taking drugs and yeah. you think you're coping, you think you're helping it, but actually are making it worse. Yeah. Yeah. I also think you, you said it starts with one glass of wine. It starts with one, and I think little by little you got into this scenario and the situation. It'll take little by little to get it's out of good. it. So yeah. celebrate those little wins, and you need the accountability. Kind of you need a friend like David and Jonathan who's going to be there through thick and thin. But but you also need a friend like Nathan who King David had who's going to call you out. Very good. Because sometimes you may think, oh, I just drink more than other people. But you don't realize actually drinking more than other people is the starting point for, for becoming an alcoholic. And, yeah, and I think also like, like we mentioned Cain and Abel, we mentioned, you mentioned the, the scripture in Proverbs about brawling. Violence has its source elsewhere often. And we need to be able to identify what's the trigger for me. For Cain, it was jealousy that triggered his anger and his violence towards his brother. Yes. For in the scripture, it's alcohol. So we need to be able to say, what is, it, what is the little thing that's triggering me that could cause massive consequences at the end? So good. The, the Bible talks about... <laughs> Killed that momentum, eh? <laughs> okay. Well, the siren's gone off and killed our momentum yet again. First it was the rain, now it's the siren. But we don't want to get struck by lightning because that'll really kill our momentum. <laughs> so we're going up to the clubhouse and... Um, Chase, I think you can pick up when we get up there. Give the guys some. We'll give the guys some keys. Maybe six things that they can do very quickly, practically, to get themselves out of this. Run. Yeah. Yes, you can. Well, here we are. We kicked off again, and I hope you've been enjoying the discussion on gender-based violence. We can't solve it by political decree. Yeah. We can't solve it by 16 days of activism. However noble those things are, it has to be solved by changed hearts. Mm -hmm. And we've given some reasons why men do what they do. But we're going to pick up now and look at some ways we can solve this. We thought six practical ways we can tell you how you can deal with this if it's an issue in your life or, if you like, in a friend's life. So I'm going to start with Pastor Chase. And uh, maybe you could kick off and give us number one. We can look at a whole lot of R's, eh? Mm, Let's make yeah. them all R's. So the first one I think, Pastor Andre, is that uh, we have to repent. And uh, that, that's the first, uh, I think that's the first call from Christ in any situation. Yes. His call to come to Him, the first thing is wow. to repent and acknowledge that we fall short of His glory. Yeah. Mm. So especially in this instant, for, for instance, for any man that is uh, involved in this um, or whose friend is in this, you know, the first thing we have to acknowledge is that I need to repent because, and repentance is not just saying sorry and then carrying on. Yes. Repentance is acknowledging yeah. that I am in sin, that I'm, I've fallen short and turning my life around to another direction. Yes. Mm. The first place we have to obviously repent is to God. Yeah. Yeah. We have to repent to God. God, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner before you and that I've fallen short. But then to be able to, let's go back to your point again that you spoke about yesterday. Mm. Number one, communicate. So we have to be willing to go back to our wife or if it's our girlfriend or whoever's involved in the situation and communicate with them 
and be willing to say I I'm wrong and I realize that I'm wrong and that's difficult for a guy right, yeah. because yeah. guys we have a we have an ego we have a pride we, we, yeah. we don't want to be seen to be weaker by acknowledging yeah. that we want we're wrong but actually repentance is actually strength not weakness yeah. Yeah. and that's how the Bible actually portrays it and how God portrays repentance as a place of strength we come to and acknowledge God I can't do this without you. Yeah. I'm weak without you. I need your grace. I need your strength. I need yeah. your mercy. And then coming to the person and be willing to go, I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Communicating, turning our lives around That's and it. headed in a different direction. We have to be willing to repent. Yeah. I think the thing that we need to remember is God's not surprised when we repent to him. Um, something like I always encourage the youth and young adults with like, when we go to God, he's not like, what do you mean you did this? You know, I think for us to first admit that, hey, I'm an abuser. It's something that I do. That's a, that's a massive thing to say. And I think we almost feel embarrassed to go to God. But we understand that God, under, God knows God knows us already and when you repent, it's not letting Him know that this is what I've done, but it's admitting that this is an area of my life that I need yeah. to yield. Inviting Him in. Yeah, and, yeah, and I have yeah. To, I'm inviting God yeah. in because if I don't yield it, God won't be able to change it. In our yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good, Pastor Chris. And I think the other side is, you know, we have bystanders, other guys who think, oh no, somebody else needs to repent. Uh, it's not my problem. It's it's the other guys, you know. So I think collectively, as as men, we have to remember that, you know, we play a role in, in shaping other men yeah. around us. Yeah, so true. we we have to repent and and make sure that we we extend the invitation that hey, if if another guy needs help, we we are there as a church. We are there yeah. as men mm, to, to stand around, you know, and and help them in that journey as as we turn our lives around. Yeah. Mm. That's great. I think the key thing is is repentance is admitting you're wrong yeah. not she deserved it and yeah, she provoked me yeah. and you know i had no choice and it was her fault actually i'm wrong and now i'm turning around yeah. and i'm going god's way yeah. so important to actually be honest about yeah. that yeah. uh pastor dev i think that the second one uh is pretty important as well you know after repent what would you say that is so you've got to repent but then you've got to resist because it's not as if the moment you've repented that the temptation is going to go away or that even the uh, the propensity to do it is going to away. Yes. Going to go away. It's sometimes it takes time, and you need to actually resist yourself. The Bible says, "Resist the devil, and he will flee from you." Um, but oftentimes, it's a gradual process to get there. It is. But it got it, it's got to start by saying, "I'm going to say no to myself." Now, the Bible says that if you keep on biting and devouring each other, you're going to consume each other. You're yep. going to consume yourselves. Yep. And you know that's what animals do. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Animals yeah. and men wow. sometimes behave yeah. like animals and refuse to acknowledge it. Exactly. Yeah. So we have to resist those yeah. animal urges, if you like. Exactly. That want to take over oh, our very dignity. Good. That's very it. Very good. The Bible said we, we spoke about Cain earlier, and God said to Cain after he murdered Abel, He said, "Sin is crouching at your door, and its desire is to have you, but you must overcome it. And you can only overcome if you make a decision to resist, very because good. nobody's going to do it for you. That's God's right. not going to resist for you. Your friend's not going to resist mm -hmm. for you. You have to resist for yourself." And you'll find that as you take that step, that step, that step, that step, you find yourself somewhere down the line where you look back and it hasn't been one big moment where suddenly this issue has been taken away, but the daily victory of overcoming and you look back and you just, you, you can't believe how God has helped you to get through that, but Very it's all good. started by you saying, no, I am going to resist. Yes, they say you should say no to something every day. Mm, and uh, certainly if you're involved in, uh, in, in violence in your home yeah. or with your girlfriend, yeah. you should say no to that and tell yourself every day, today I will not lift a hand, swear, or behave in an unseemly manner. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, what Pastor Chris mentioned yesterday when we were on the course about uh, how Paul talks about how he disciplines his body. Yes. In other words, that uh, I'm not just going to get over things, uh, repent before God, and now suddenly, oh, that's that's cool, like you were yeah. saying. Yeah. No, no, I have to pay my body. I need to discipline my body. Yeah. No, no, no. And as we do that in God's grace, I think we veer more and more away and more towards holiness, which yes. is God's ultimate goal for us. No one gets a hole in one the first time you step onto the course. You've got to practice. It's a, it's not a, it's not a just a step up and hey, I've got this right. Mm. Um, it's a daily discipline, the daily routine, the daily determination that I'm going to resist. Where eventually you find yourself playing the game that you want to play. Yeah, I remember we were playing around on the golf course, and you, know, you miss a shot. And it's like, I'm not good at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now get good at it. Yeah. Keep at it. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the momentum. Yeah, it's the best and you'll get it right. It's, uh, speaking about golf, it's Gary Player who says, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Yeah, yeah. it's a great saying. And it's a great uh, actually quote about that. Great saying. Well, let's give the guys another R. What would you give them? Number three. You know, Pastor Andrew, I think one of the biggest things that could help men is understand that we have to respect each other respect women in our lives and I think that's that's one of the biggest things that uh, Jesus uh, spoke about a lot when when they asked him what are, what are the biggest commandments he first started with okay loving God and then the next important one he said love 
your neighbor yeah. as yourself. Mm-hmm. And so if you can place value in, in women, and Jesus placed value in women, he mm-hmm. respected he women, did. he yeah. honored women, and I think that's something that men, you know, have to do. We, we don't deserve something. I think so, so sometimes as men we can feel like, okay, no, I'm, I'm a man, so I'm entitled to this, I'm entitled to mm-hmm. that. And that's the very issue that, that, that leads to violence because, you know, there's no respect, but you, you think you're entitled to something that you really aren't entitled to. Yeah, I, th- I think men get angry because there's unfulfilled expectations. Where's my yeah. food when I came home? Yeah. Why can't I sit and watch TV? How come I can't go out with the boys? Yeah. Yeah. But you're not actually respecting your wife and what she needs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting, I, I remember reading this years and years and years ago. Someone once said, love your neighbors yourself and don't forget your wife is your closest neighbor. Wow. Okay. Very good. And sometimes we, you know, we treat that as a weird scripture for the next yeah. door neighbor in the That's complex so or wherever yeah. we live. But actually it's our wives. Yeah. 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 Very good. I think a good way that we, can, um, that we can break entitlement in our life, that we can love our, our neighbor and love our wives as ourselves is first have a healthy self-image. Because yes. if we don't have a healthy self-image, don't overinflate it, don't think too highly yeah. of yourself and don't think no. too low of yourself, but you have to have a, a, a level self-image of yourself. And that's always typically something which are young people and teenagers. But I think as men get older, if you don't develop your self-image then, you're not going to develop it now if you don't spend some time developing it and spending time saying, actually, I need, a, I need to look at the things in my life that are, that, that are affecting my self-image because how I view myself will determine how I, how I respect other people. Yeah. And I think we live in a culture of disrespect. I think from a right at a young we do. age, we, do. we disrespect authority, we disrespect policemen, we disrespect um, our boss at work. You know, everybody will have a snide comment about their boss. And you see it on TV, you see it in the workplace, but we should be counter culture. We should be, actually, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respect my wife. I'm going to respect people because the Bible says that that's how we should do that. And I think the remedy is to serve. If we can go to our wife and say, I'm going to serve you out of respect. It, it's not, what can I get out of this relationship? It's yes. rather, hey, how can I serve this relationship? And if I'm serving her, she's serving me, we're serving God. That's a healthy relationship to be in. Mm-hmm. And, it, and you take the focus of me and mine, it's an us and we. And I think that's, that's vitally important. You know, what struck me as you were speaking was that the whole culture disrespect. Mm-hmm. Disrespect is almost a sign of strength. Yes. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you like the cops, you're rude to the cops, you're rude to people. It's like it shows like you're the man. Yes. But actually, it's the exact opposite. 100%. It shows how weak you are. And re- respect is something that you give. You, people don't have to earn the respect. Yes. It's yeah. something that it's comes good. from you yeah. that you give to others, no yeah. matter that's right. how they about you than it's about Exactly. Them. In fact, respect and honor is not something that's conditional. It's something that you do because of who you are and because of what the Bible says. In fact, that's why one of the commandments, the Ten Commandments, is honor your mother and father. If you can honor your mother and father from the time that you are young, you understand the principle of honor and then respect becomes second nature. I think, Barsano, what it's also good for us to remember is to separate. We have to acknowledge how we've been brought up in a home and what the Word says. Because we can often go... My mom didn't do that. My, when I grew up, we didn't do it like that in our house. And I, I, my dad always got his meals and my dad got this. And we have to go, okay, what is my, 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 uh, my upbringing and what does the word of God say? Yeah, I need to f- follow what God's word says in our home. Gets back to heaven's culture again, yeah. as we said earlier. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think it's, it's good for us to always look at the fact that Jesus is the ultimate man. Mm. Like there, there's yeah. no more of a manly man than Jesus. Mm. And he always elevated women. Mm. True. You look at the woman at the well, a woman who many men had taken advantage of, and he elevated her. Yeah. Look at the woman caught in adultery. Jesus elevated yeah, her. True. Um, where all other men were behaving in a disrespectful way, he actually... He gave respect to Very them good. and helped to elevate their lives. Yeah. And that's that, that model of manliness is the model that we should all be following in our lives. Yeah, well, most men who would have found a woman like that at the well would have hit on her and seen her as a vulnerable opportuni- mm. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting thing is we, we don't often talk about it, but the Trinity is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they show mutual respect. Yes. Yeah. Now Very one good. tries to dominate the other. Yes. They each give difference to each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's really our picture of relationships. Well, Chris, let's have a look at another R. What would we tell them to do? I think another R would be a renew. We need to renew yes. ourselves. There needs to be a daily renewal of our, ourselves. And I think we, you spoke about upbringing and we spoke about different cultures. At the end of the day, uh, it's a hard issue. And the only thing that's going to change our hearts is God's Word. It's mm. by not just reading God's Word, but by praying. Mm. I think sometimes men might find it easier to read God's Word, but then forget to pray or depend on the Holy Spirit. Yes. I think there needs to be a balance of both. We need to be, be both dependent on the Holy Spirit, praying, but then also reading the Bible and let it change our heart. And when our hearts mm. change, then our lives will change. In fact, Moses in the Bible, uh, when he went up and he was in the presence of God, there was evidence. His mm. face shone. Yeah. But as he stepped away from God's presence, eventually it begins to fade. That's why it needs to be a daily thing. It needs yeah. to be yeah. a renewal. It needs to be a, a, every morning I wake up, 
and if it's a priority if it's a priority to me I'm gonna do it like if I'm gonna if if, if God's a priority I'm gonna tithe I'm gonna give my first 10 percent why not give 10 percent of our day why not give the first part of our day to God mm. and make sure that there's a renewal because when there's a renewal and there's evidence of life change in our life our spouses will see it our family yeah. will see it it can change the narrative it can change what our family looks like in our lives very good you know when you think of that uh, the whole thing of renewal and changing relationships. Yeah. In the country, we want to change everything. Racism, you know, we can, we'll punish you, we'll send you to prison, we'll fine you. Well, child, it just means you keep your mouth shut. Yeah. But you can't change your heart. But a Christian, their heart gets changed. Yeah. Then they view women, men, other races differently. Yeah. And that's really what we need, eh, Carson? Um, yes, Pastor Andrew. I think uh, renew, renewal also, you know, has its place in relationships. You know, we have to choose the relationships that we keep because the people around us that we surround ourselves with will shape how we think. Mm -hmm. You know, so a part of renewal is making sure that, you know, you have the right people. Sometimes, as guys, I mean, if you have friends who, you know, are going in that direction of, of violence uh, against women and they're not listening, it, it's time for you to, you know, separate yourself. You know, mm -hmm. renewal also means removal. Very you know, good. Very good new job. friendships, new yeah, relationships have to be built Excellent. and we have to do that as guys. So good. Yeah. We're talking about heart. David has prayed, mm. create in me a new heart, a, new heart, a clean heart. Yes. And that's ultimately what we need. Mm. Every day I think all of us need to come before God. Create in me God, a clean heart. Yeah. Very good. I think, His presence is what changes us. Yeah. I think what you said about removal is so key. If you look in the Bible, um, Abraham is the, the father of faith. And a sign of his covenant with God was circumcision. And it's not a fun topic, but circumcision is ultimately the removal of flesh. So often people say, you know, uh, my, I'm a Christian because, you know, it's all about relationship. I think it's actually about relationship, but there's self-control, there's yes. removal. There needs to be a sign of the fact that you are Christian. For Abraham, it might have been circumcision, which is practically or physical. But for us, it needs to be the removal of flesh in our lives. And we can manage our anger. We can manage what's happening in our lives. Yes. I think that James says, faith without works is dead. Yeah, so you can't just be a believer. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to show it by renewal, and removal, and changing your lifestyle. Yeah. Chris, uh, speaking of circumcision, the scriptures go on to say um, that we should circumcise our hearts. Yes, yes it does. Um, and that also speaks of not just a physical act, mm -hmm. not just an external influence, mm -hmm. but something deep on the inside. Yeah. And renewal always happens on the inside. Um, there are many external factors that can help us, many external structures that can facilitate change, mm -hmm. but it's a change of the heart and the decision to say, I'm, I'm cutting off something on the inside mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. I'm cutting off this part of my sin. I'm cutting off this Very desire. Um, and that, that's what sets us on the track of being renewed. Yeah. Very good. Let's look at another one. Uh, I think another one is rebuild, because you can repent, and you can renew and you can do all these things, but you have to rebuild because the relationship has been damaged. So if you're dating someone or if you're married, you can't say, well, you've got to forgive me and we've got to move on, you know? It's over now, I went to a men's conference and I, and I get it. Now you have to rebuild what you've damaged. And rebuilding takes time. Yeah. So in the book of Nehemiah, they had to rebuild the wall, but they couldn't just pick up the stones and build them back in. They had to clean them off because they were burnt stones. And it's a picture of relationships. You can't just put the stones back. They've been yeah. damaged. So now there needs to be a time of restoration, of rebuilding, and, and you can't just say, well, you've, you know, I've, I've confessed, forgive me, and now we move on. Your wife has been damaged, your family's been damaged, your girlfriend's relationship, maybe in your home with your sister, there's a lot of baggage. It's got to be removed, and you've got to give people time for that. Well, the last R is responsibility, obviously. Take responsibility, don't blame others. Don't say it's the country's problem, it's my wife's problem. Yeah. Take responsibility. I'm a man, and one of the things men do is take responsibility yeah. for their lives, for their homes. They're leaders, and they're leaders in society. So, men, that's it for now. We've had a great discussion. I hope it's helped you. It's not activism or political decree that will change the challenges in our nation, but changed hearts, changed lives, and a willingness of men yeah. to humble themselves and to go Amen. God's way. Amen.